Okay. Workout resumed. Here we go. So we're going to go out at Spanish pace, is that right? Yeah. Very good. This is about it, so we don't have to go any faster than this. I was just trying to think when the last time we ran together was. It was on the when we ran with the group. Oh, that's right. That was the friendship run. That was our first night run together. Well, I don't think the weather's going to change from, from this. That was good. You like this? Yep. Yeah, well, I guess you're not going to get hot for sure. I'm pretty sure we'll start sweating though at some stage. Well, I can't. If, I, if, I'm, if I like the cold weather, I can't sweat. And this, that's only if it's the heat. Yeah, but even so, you can sweat from effort. Oh, yeah. Even when it's snowing. But maybe not at Spanish paste. I was telling Norma today that the funny thing is that when we first started running together was when we were running the very fastest. Oh. You remember? Yeah. Because you just finished running a season with Boyd yeah. at the track. But I said, to, I said to Norma, you were used to running for well, we've... three minutes max. But we started running together before that. Before track. Yeah, but you weren't serious. No. You had one year that you were quite serious. Well, you had trained me, and then when I went, after you trained me, I went. To... After I went to Spain. Well. That's what happened. Well, you trained me before Spain. Yeah. And then I went to track, and I showed them. How far I could go. Yeah. Everyone was so surprised. Yeah, they were surprised, but they were probably weren't weren't terribly impressed. What? They weren't terribly impressed. What do you mean? Well, because if they go to track, it's because they want to run fast. Oh. If they wanted to go for endurance, oh. they wouldn't have been at the track. Oh no, um, there's two groups. Uh -huh. The coach was really impressed. That's good. Two of the coaches. I think because there's coaches that are um, looking for long distance too. Yeah. It's not just fast. But I don't know if it's true, yeah, but it seems to me that a lot of people doing a special O want to train for baseball or floor hockey or whatever team they're going to play in so endurance is important they're not all going to be track stars like Boyd they're going to want to do other sports and they're using running as a way of staying in shape me and Boyd are the only we have two groups oh, yeah. one that's me and Boyd and then the rest are just uh, fast yeah okay well, I can tell you now that we're going to see puddles. Me oh, no. oh yeah. yeah. Me and Boyd are the only long distance. So, when Boyd first started, the coaches were highly impressed with him. Yeah. And then, and then when I joined, they were like, oh, no, okay, we got another Boyd. We got another Boyd. <laughs> and they were like, how far are you going there? And I said, oh, I'm going a long ways. That's when you did. Hi. That's when you did your half marathon attempt. Yeah. But a half a marathon at the track is probably a lot easier than half a marathon on the road. Because there's absolutely no hills. The whole definition of track running is flat. You're going for speed. They don't even do the marathon at the track. The longest distance that they do at the track. Do you know what it is? What do you mean there's no speed at the track? There is no marathon distance run on a track. You know what the longest track event is? Well, in the Olympics, it's the 10,000 meters, which is 10K. But in true track and field, 
think the longest distance is 3k. Oh. Yeah. That's for pure track athletes. Special Olympic boy does 10k. Yeah. Always. Well, that's his speciality. Yeah. I oh. remember taking a picture of you. But when I go on, on track, here, when I go on a track, I don't do speed. I just take my time. Yeah, I know. But you've sacrificed your speed for endurance. Yeah. That's probably my fault. Well, yeah. Well, no, the coaches are impressed. That's good. Well, if I have to run this wide to avoid puddles. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to end up with wet shoes. We'll see if I can get through one lap without getting wet. When Jackal comes as well as that means he'll be better than ever. I'm hoping that the cooler weather encourages you to get out and train with me. Because it's going to start being my favorite weather. Yep. We could do some night, night runs together and uh, we can look out for the International Space Station. That winter? Yep. Did we could even see it that winter? Of course. Oh. It's up there all the time. I thought that was only during the summer you could see it. No, no. <laughs> The sky is just as clear in the winter, except when it's like this, when it's overcast. But you must remember seeing the moon at night. If you could see the moon, yeah. then you can see anything in the sky. If you have the telescope or if you have enough natural eyesight, We should have done 1k by now. Do you want me to check my app? Um, uh, no, it's okay. I got it on auto pause, so if we stop, the clock will stop for a second. So let me just get under the shelter here. <laughs> now that's a big puddle. Yeah. 1.21 kilometers so far. Hang on, let me just put it away. It just goes to show how, how much uh, quieter it is indoors because I heard the app talking really loudly when I was at home. But out here in the noise of the open air, I couldn't even hear that the app was working. I'm beginning to think that I'm not gonna worry about puddles anymore today. What, you want to run from here to Canadian Tire? Yeah. All right. Ask him because I don't want to Okay, so we'll try and stay dry until we get out of Lambrick. And then we should be able to stay dry. We can go via Larchwood. You know that street that goes straight opposite the crosswalk? Mm. Yeah, and then we come up through the back. See how easily we change plans, eh, hey Derek? From running laps, we decided to run to Canadian Tire. Well, we're still running laps. Yeah. We're just, instead of doing four laps, we're going to be doing the equivalent of three laps, depending if we run back, which we probably will. This is your last chance to stay dry. Oh, this is a big puddle. Oh, 
<laughs> Did I tell you I ran with uh, Lindsay and Jeff and Sandy yep. on Sunday? Well, the neat thing about that run was that I recorded it while I was running and today I went out for a run this morning and uh, guess what show I listened to when I was listening? The Shadow. No, I was listening to my show. Oh? Yeah, it just came up on my playlist. It just happened to be the next song on my playlist it was my latest show. There's one show you should listen to um, the Shadow Horror and Wax. Yeah? Oh, that's scary. Hang on. That girl took a risk. Or well, that person, I should say. Could be a girl on the bike. Yeah, but, you know, I, well, I knew it might happen. I, I said, well, I don't know how many shows... I've got backed up on my podcasts, but uh, sometime today, my show's going to pop up, and when it does, I'll skip to the next show. But instead of that, I thought, no, I'll give it a listen. And I was listening to it, and I thought, hey, this is really good. I really enjoyed it. I'm not just saying it because it was me. You know why I enjoyed it? Because the cadence was just perfect. Because it was my steps anyway, it was like I couldn't hear my own steps because they were landing in cadence with the, with the recording. So even though I wasn't looking forward to running this morning, once I started listening, I got inspired. So there you go. Yeah. I think there is lights in the park though. They might have security lights. Or maybe not. That street light would be on. We should come up to distance. Two kilometers. It was so funny um, when uh, Sandy said, What? About what? Oh, about the hours. Do you don't want to go for one hour or two hours? When? When we're racing, when we're running with the. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yet, oh, God. And then after she starts talking about, well, I'm going to do five hours. <laughs> yeah. It goes to show how people have set ideas. Yeah. They say, okay, Friday, one hour maximum. So if I say one and a half, it's, oh, no, no. And the next day, they do three hours. That's just laziness. Huh? It's not. It's because they, they've already put their heads around the idea that their long run's going to be tomorrow. But how are you supposed to make um, uh, a really long run if you're setting back your hours. Because they forth. knew they had an hour, a long run planned. It's like me, I always plan my week. By Wednesday, I know when I'm going to be running and for how long. And it's, even though I can change my plans, they kind of can't because they're working they don't have too many options if they don't do their four hour run on Saturday they don't get another chance I go by I gradually move up yeah I you should try and increase a little bit I don't each time I don't do three hours and I drop back down to, to one? one hour I don't know that's there's some people I tend to do that. I tend to have one long day and a short day the next day. Like today is going to be a double for me. Yeah. 
when you're allowed tomorrow, I'll take it easy and do just one hour. Yeah. Just because you're doing a double. Yeah. It really helps in your training. If you can throw a double in, it's like getting an extra day in the week. But what if you're not getting a double and you only do one hour? Then you have to do two the next. Yeah. You've got to build up to what you missed. Yeah. That's how he doesn't do that, does she? Well, basically she only has three days of the week where she can run. And uh, one of them has to be at least three hours. So when I said two for Friday, she knew that she was going to be running three or four on Saturday. So she said, no, no, just one. Just one. That drives me nuts. Uh, you shouldn't, shouldn't get upset about it. It's her training. I, know, I, just, I care about her. Yeah, I know. We all do. But she's training for a 100-mile race, and we're not. If she's training for a 100-mile race, do you think she'd gradually um, do the two days after the one hour to make up? Is that $5? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a $5 bill. It was just one of those printed Kleenex. Did she end up making it up? Oh. I think so, yeah. Well, shortly after that, shortly after that decision of hers, after our night run, that's when she and I and Jeff and Lindsay stopped running together. Why? Because they wanted to go longer and longer. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. And I didn't. It didn't fit in with my plans. But I like how the way their method is. They go gradually further and further. Yeah. That's the, in the perfect world, that's the ideal scenario. I, I, I call that the jackal. Definitely. The jackal approach. Yeah. There is a limit to the amount of increasing that you can do because once you get to a certain age you don't heal up as quick. So if you do two big runs back to back but on the third day you don't have anything left unless you're prepared to go out and do like today, the Spanish pace. This bike's been here for three days. I'll make it up tomorrow. Well, no, you're doing good today. Look at that, antibiotics don't work against cold or flu viruses. Hang on, we've got time. Because flu is a virus. Antibiotics are only good against germs. Does it help our immune system? Nope. If anything, it compromises the immune system. People ask for antibiotics. People ask for antibiotics for colds and they shouldn't. They should be looking for antiviral. Why do they ask for antibiotics? Well, because they think they've got a lung infection. They think they've got, like, pneumonia or bronchitis. Those are germ infections. But a flu or cold, they're viruses. That's as far as I understand it, anyway. Did you bring your bike in already? No. No. I don't think they're prepared to bring, for you to bring it in. But you can ask for their advice. I didn't come out with a wallet. So, if they recommend we buy something, we'll have to come back. It's funny how Canadian tire has a certain smell to it, eh? I'm not sure what it is, but it's... Hey, look. Oh, whoa. The babe. Oh, whoa. Oh, my God. 
Deal of the century. What are they doing? Are they trying to raise money by selling the poster? Let's have a look. Opening bid, 200 bucks. You see, you put it, you write your bid. I thought the one who went to the Yankees for a million dollars. Well, maybe they got that wrong. Oh, $25,000 mean a million today? No, no. You might have it wrong. Or you might have it wrong. Here. $25,000, that was what his first paycheck was. Anyway, I didn't bring my reading glasses. But his real name was George H. Herman. Ruth. Herman. Herman. Okay. Do you want to make a bid? Do you have 200 plus dollars to spend? Nope. Right. What's this at the bottom here? <laughs> Applicable sales tax and shipping charge is $24.99. Ah, uh, extra. Okay, so the least you can get that for would be $229. I'm not too sure if there's a gateway to... Um, not the hell, but... <laughs> I think if we go to the automotive department, they're the ones that will have the experts. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I want to press now to the test, please. Okay. That's strange, isn't it? Yeah. Well, they're in the back there. Hi. I phoned two days ago, and um, somebody said Automotive might be able to uh, take super glue off my Canadian tire bike. Okay. That was that. You took the service center. Because the, the people that would actually be able to help you do something with, like I can help you find parts, but the person that actually would help you remove something off your bike would most likely be the service center because they have the mechanic. Oh, okay, so they'd have to go next door? Yeah, so what you do is you go um, past the cashiers, stay inside the building, and walk. Oh, right I know, them. there's a little corridor there. Oh. Right to the corridor. All right. That's the service center that should be able to help you out with that. Thank you. Because the only thing that I could do for you would be to sell you a product that you could take yourself to remove the stuff. So yeah, I that's what I do is I, I sell you something that you can do yourself. But what would that be called? Goof off? Goo gone. Goo gone. What, what, what is it, like a tar? Or I've already like? tried goof off and that didn't work. I tried professional Super strengths, goof off, that didn't work. Oh, wow. Yeah, they would be the guys that would be able to actually go and do something for you. I can only sell you products. That do you know if Goo Gone is better? Um, all I know is Goo Gone is the one I have. What, what, is it, what is it that's on your bike? Super Goo. Super Goo that's on your bike. I don't know anything that would take Super Goo off. But how big an area, Derek? Because I've got I've got this stuff, Bug and Tar. Oh, I still have to show you. And then the Goo Gone. Yeah. That's the Goo Gone in your hand, and this is a Bug and Tar. And then I've got basically this, but through my different brands like Simon, Eyes, and McGuire. Same yeah. sort of thing. But what, 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 did you put it on the down, one of the down bar spars on the back of the frame? Oh no, you have a fully suspension bike, don't you? It's on the bar. Yeah, so is it an area the size of my finger, like that, of super glue? Yeah. I think he was trying to stick a reflector on his frame, and then he didn't like it, so when he took it off... The glue is still on there. The glue. Yeah, so that's what I sell. Is I sell the Goo Gone, then I sell the Bug and Tar, then I sell the Bug and Tar through Meguiar's and through Simon Eyes. Okay. So that, that's what I have as for products, but for the people that you would have spoke to that may actually be able to try and help you remove it, that would be the, the service department. And, and they would probably charge so much an hour for their labor. If, if they well, they charge $100 an hour through shop labor, through yes. like actually car automotive uh, problems. But 
I'm sure if you talk to the guy out front, he'll be able to work something out with you. He's usually right. pretty flexible well, and you. things like that. So. Um, I've also tried uh, WD-40, and I didn't work. Yeah, uh, that one. That one's more of a, somewhat of a greaser than anything. I don't know if it would be able to take things off. The other thing, Derek, we could do, think about, is just removing right down to the metal, and then just recut, repainting that little bit of the frame. <laughs> no? Go, go see what he says. Maybe he'll be able to take it off for you. All right. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. I would have thought just taking it down to the metal and then repainting. Oh, God. That would be, that'd be horrible. That would be a travesty. Anyway. You know how some people get stressed when they have more than one or two customers to deal with? Yeah. Instead of just saying, i got to focus on what this one guy needs yeah. and forget about the six people behind. This guy has to be my concern for now. Hang on, let me just start my app and then we can run back and stay warm. What happens is I sometimes I'll phone back and they'll get, like with the banks. You get to speak to somebody different. Yeah, and then they'll, they'll be the ones that reimburse me for like an NSF fee, right? Yeah. Depending on the person. And so that's why I always phone back. Well, it's it really depends also if... If, they, if they're Christian or not, because sometimes people just don't give other people the benefit. You know, they don't say, well, it's my duty to help this guy out. They just think, oh, well, if he's not going to pay $100 an hour labor charges, we're not interested. But that's where customer relationships come in. You know, if you're, yes. you're less likely to go back to Canadian Tire with a car problem because he was rude to you or he didn't have the time of day to speak to you. Yep, you know, we should open a business, you and me. We'll show them what customer relationship's all about. Even if it was just a cafe. Well, that's why I told my... Job counselor? No, I told somebody... I was. Yeah. Um, she, uh, she was quite mad about. She was quite mad at the customer, and I said, "It doesn't matter if there's fire or not. You gotta all, keep your cool." Well, press the button, will you? Still all the right. What? Let's look at where are you at. I always want to attend. The most important thing is that you don't lose your cool, cool. even if they're. Cool. They didn't lose their cool. What I said was, the customer is still right, even if they swear off. Yeah. They're the ones that pay your wages. That's what they got to remember. The customer can swear at you all you want. All they want, and they're still right. Yeah. I went over on Monday to clear... She didn't like that too much, no. <laughs> no. I went over yesterday to work with for my friend Stanley. He wanted me to clear some leaves from under his bushes. And uh, it was the same day that the street sweeper came. And the street sweeper went right past, past his pile of pine needles. We're going to cross. They told him that the pine needles should be so many centimeters high and so many centimeters from the edge of the road and not in big lumps. I mean, next thing they'll say is, oh, and could you please help us to clear your own pine needles? You should think, well, this poor man is in a wheelchair. He has to pay Carlos to come over and clear his leaves and they don't even have the courtesy to use their machine, they swept right past it and they carried on down the road sweeping, but they missed his pile altogether. And I thought that was shameful. Anyway, I ended up using up all his garbage bags to store them. I ended up with eight full garbage bags. Mother Nature's poop. <laughs> yeah, but it was pine needles, oh. and they don't like them. Pine needles get stuck in the machine. That's what they were saying. The argument they were using was, 
that the pine needles will clog the street sweeper. And there's, the leaf people were saying, oh, we can't take pine needles because they, they clog up our you know, vacuum machine. You're going to have to do something about your laces, Derek. Just because they went loose and now you've got a knot, triple knotting them now won't help, but at least you shouldn't trip on them. When we get back to my place, if you want to do it, I'll, I'll untie them for you. I'm an expert at untying knots. I used to love, as a kid, having a piece of really badly knotted string and trying to untangle it all. Did you ever do that? Oh, no. Did you ever have to do that, like with kite string or fishing line? That's what I used to have to untangle. Fishing line and kite string. They always used to get tangled up. Okay, so we're... Yeah. Customer service is at a great low right now. It's at an all-time low. Yeah. Well, all-time low, yeah. I say great low because I'm so mad about it. <laughs> yeah. And that's with Christmas coming up as well, so... So much for the season of goodwill. The so next time the weather's nice, you should bring the bike over and I can visualize the problem. Well, I can do that right now. Well, I don't want to work outside right now. When I get back, I'm going to enjoy seeing the wood fire burning. And a beer, too. And a beer, yeah. Any excuse, you know me. I have to go back and sing to my cat. That's my excuse. Oh yeah, you'll be able to try my new beer. You still have one credit on a beer. You made new beer? Yeah. It's been in the bottle for two weeks now. It's not the one I tried, is it? No, that was the last of the old beer. Hello. She was a very serious girl. Mind you, she was running quite fast. Oh, you just going for a quick uh, nice spin. Well, that's about what we'll do when we get back. When we get back, it'll be about four and a half pace. What do you think's the difference between running and juggling? Oh, I just say it's all the same. You do? Yeah, I, I think it's relative to how fit you are. Yeah, exactly. Jogging would just be basically your slow pace. Yeah. Comfortable, comfort zone. Yeah. Or maybe slower than comfort zone would be jogging. Because I don't know about you, but I can already feel that I'm wet from sweat as well as from rain. I can feel that there's a little bit of build-up of heat. Not me. No? Not yet? Well, you're running in short sleeves, Derek. So how do you feel after your two-week break from running? I feel good. Good? I think the weather has a lot to do with it. You like this wet weather. If it was hot, I'd be like... Trying. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> uncle. Yeah. No, not uncle. No, we haven't had any uncle-worthy hills to run. If that's even a word. Uncle-worthy. I know praiseworthy is a word. I know somebody that's nickname is Uncle. Uncle? His last name's Uncle. Robbie. <laughs> I'm going to see Robbie. On Saturday. You're gonna run with it? Zaren, look. Huh. 
Eyes on. Good for you. Just doing this daily walk. Yep. We're now running into the wind. Doesn't make a lot of difference at this speed. So, running between the baseball diamonds, you and I have run this section of Lambrick maybe, what would you say, 30 times? Yeah. At least. Uh, I know we've... We've, we've got to take it back. Yeah, I know that we've recorded at least 15 times right here, the cadence zone. What? Oh, I see. What? Brooks. Brooks. They're quite compatible with Sokoning. They must be cousins. What was the other one? The other pair was Sokoning. No. That's when we had was real it, cadence. Was it Reebok? No. Uh, ASIC. Oh yeah, they didn't like each other. They didn't like each other. ASIC and Sokoning. They're like sworn enemies. They're like Superman and Kryptonite. Did they take your green garbage today? Yeah. Good. They're late though. Well, sometimes they do the, the grey bin first, and other times they do the green bin. Today they did the grey one first. But I guess it's up to the driver. So we got another about two and a half minutes to go. And we're done from our Canadian tire wasted time run. Well, I'll just call it the Jackal Cub has risen run. The Jackal Cub has risen run. Okay. It's a deal. It was the first time I came back from. Uh, I came back to running. When I came back from Spain? Well, yeah, or any other time. I only did uh, 3K. Yeah. Today you've done a little longer. So basically, when somebody rises back, yeah. they, they come back more better. Yep. It's like the return of the... Phoenix. Yeah. Oh, they've tidied up their garage. So where do you keep your bike now? Oh, yeah. Around the back? Oh, I gotta go to uh, home hardware now. Alright. So I'll see you later for your beer, okay? Bye-bye. Thanks, Derek. Thanks for coming out. So, Derek and I had our first little rerun together. My second run of the day. And I shall also put this out as my Wednesday show. I know it's not Wednesday yet, but what the heck. Give you one more day to listen to it. And then nothing until the weekend, unless I get really inspired. So, I... I just came out and I went out for a run with my friend and now I'm finished again. Oh, okay. This is my second run today.
kind of what I was thinking, bro. Yeah, you either got to see me running or on my bike. Mm. I don't have a car anymore. Ah, too expensive. That's what I figured, you know. I don't have to worry about ICBC. Don't have to worry about having a beer. I haven't drove in years. No? You don't need your guitar. Not really. And if you got a buddy that has a car, yeah. you know. I live in town, so. As long as you can get to your jobs, yeah. that's the main thing. Anyway, where, where do you think you're going to finish this job? I hope we have it here Friday. Very nice. I'm sure Brendan will be delighted. I think everybody else in the neighborhood would do. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. What can you do? Well, you have to do what you have to do, eh? Yep. Yeah, look at that up there in the eaves of the house. Is that a bird? I think so, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought it might have been Superman. <laughs> See ya. Okay, so I was just yakking with the, the neighbor, one of the neighbor's building guys, Brendan's workforce. So, there you go, Spanish place, 701, 5K. That's what I told Derek we'd do. Bye-bye, everybody.